I was thinking um, I should share a little story about something that happened in 1989 when I was 19 years old and working at a, a music store. Okay, one day I got a phone call from a little old lady. <laughs> she goes, she, <laughs> she goes, um, do you have any Mahala Jackson tapes? And I uh, went and checked, and we had several. And I came back and said, yeah, we sure do. We have a whole bunch. Which one are you looking for? And she said, oh, nothing in particular. I just wanted to know if you had them. I said, well, we sure do. She said, would you like me to set one aside for you and hold, and hold one for you? And she said, no, dear. I don't have any money, but maybe someday I'll come up there and buy one. I just love Mahala Jackson. And as she spoke, I just, my heart just warmed up it, listening to her. She, um, she described Mahala Jackson and, and how she's like a gospel singer. I didn't know this, but she's like a gospel singer. And she told me how much this music really blessed her and um, as she was talking I was getting the, the, the wheels started turning in my head I, I um, started getting an idea I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna be um, I'm gonna do a good deed and I decided to buy some Mahala Jackson tapes for her and um, so I, I I said I said well um, ma'am which which one what's your favorite she said, I don't have a way to listen to them. I said, you don't have a way to listen to them even if you had them? And she said, no, I don't have a tape player. I don't know why she called, but I guess she just wanted to talk. And um, so yeah, I knew what to do. I, and so I said, well, well, let me put you on our mailing list. And so I got her name and address. And I was gonna send these to her. I was gonna, um, I didn't tell her, but I, so I got her name and address and thanked her for calling, told her I'd put her on the mailing list. And then, and then that day on my lunch break, I, I purchased like four or five Mahala Jackson tapes and a little, and uh, I was gonna package it up and send it to her as a gift. And, but that evening when I got off of work, I got the idea to actually bring them to her. I said, I, I said, Tommy, I, I want to bring these, these, these tapes to this old woman, this sweet old woman. I told him the whole story and everything. He goes, well, where, what, he goes, what's the address? And I pulled out the piece of paper I wrote it on and he looked at it. He goes, no, no, I'm not, I'm not driving there. I exited the highway and started driving towards the neighborhood. He, he said, Amy, I got a bad feeling about this. We should not be over here. I got a bad feeling. Um, you know, we're reacting. This is good for us. We need to, you know, get out of our element. We need to, to be more uh, socially proactive. And because I, 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 I used to go feed homeless people downtown. And I mean, they said, we should do that. We should do that. Um, we need to get out of our comfort zones. And, and anyway, um, so he, he kept saying, you're going to get me shot. We're going to get shot. We're going to get shot. And I was laughing. And finally we found the street and we, we found the house. And we pull up in the driveway. And it's late at night. We pull up in the driveway and we hear this screen door open. And we hear this old woman cussing. I can't repeat what she said, but she said, she said, you better get the blank, blank, blank off my blank, blank property or I'm gonna blow your blank, blank, blanking head off. And we looked and there was a shotgun pointed at us. This, this old woman had a shotgun pointed at us, and mainly at Tommy, and it happened so fast. And he, he's like a little red when he's mad, and he clenched up and looked at me, and um, I, I, I said, no, no, I said, I said, are you such and such? And she got real quiet, 
and I showed her that I held up the paper. You know, we're standing in her driveway. <laughs> and I said, I said, I'm, I'm Amy. I talked to you today on the phone at work. And I'm silence. She's still <laughs> aimed at us. <laughs> and uh, I held up the bag. I said, look, I, I brought you a gift. I brought you the Mahala Jackson tapes. And the gun, the shotgun goes down. down and she invited us in and she apologized and stuff and explained her actions which which I totally understood and Tommy was just furious he didn't say a word his face was all clenched up and his um, veins were pul pulsating temples you know they kind of like boing, 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 you know when people get real mad it turned real red and, and the veins so he didn't he wasn't amused by it he didn't think it was funny but I thought it was hilarious because I knew we were doing the right thing. So she invited us in, and it was so cool to be there. I mean, I, I just, I was fascinated. I looked around and saw her decorations and stuff. She had a little, you know, plastic oh, yeah. fruit thing. And it's a very modest little home, a little hardwood floors. And she was an old lady, all in her slippers, and kind of run down looking. And so I gave her her, she invited us to sit down, and it was, she was like so happy to have some visitors. And I looked at Tommy, I said, see, 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 this is good. And he didn't speak. And um, so she opened her gift and opened up all her tapes and op opened up the Walkman, and she was really happy. And she laughed and said, oh, praise God, God <laughs> answered prayer. God bless you both. And. She just blushed us up and down and, and loved them. And, oh, it felt so good to do that. So we stayed about 10 minutes and then um, it was time to leave. And as we were standing, we, we were standing at the door about to leave. And she thanked us again. And this is what she said as we were walking out the door. You know, we already said goodbye, we already shook hands. I think she gave me a hug and she shook Tommy's hand and we were already walking out the door and she just stopped in her tracks and looked down and I said I said are you okay what's wrong her face just suddenly fell and she just shook her head and sighed I said what is it she goes if I only had a baby grand piano. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy literally grabbed my arm and pulled me away. <laughs> I, I, so I, I think, I, I think at the last minute she, she got resourceful and she became an opportunist. Like she was thinking, okay, these are little, Good Samaritans, and um, I think that was just a last ditch effort to, you know, just throw that out there. You know, I, I told her as I, I started to get into a conversation with her about it. I was going to explain to her why I could not get her a baby grand piano, but I, Tommy pulled me away. And